expecting really another hung verdict. I was, uh, I set, I set my expectations really low, so I was so floored and overwhelmed and overcome with joy and gratitude that I actually was like exploding like a volcano with emotion in the courtroom, <laughs> trying to cover the gaps. And then I put my head down and banged my forehead on the bench in front of me. And then we were thrown out. Yeah, all and then the you were three Bill out. Cosby survivors. Yeah, there are three Bill Cosby survivors who've been here every day of this trial, and it's Victoria Valentino, Therese Sergis, and myself. We were sobbing. We couldn't contain our emotions. So, the, yes, Judge O'Neill said, order in the court, out. <laughs> and we did not get to see this display of uh, profanity by Bill Cosby. We heard about it. Yeah, the profanity uh, Lily's talking about is there was a question over whether Bill Cosby would be, was a flight risk. Uh, the the uh, prosecution said, look, he has all sorts of money. He might have a private, he has a private plane. He could flee the country. And Bill Cosby stood up and says, he does not have a plane, and then used an expletive. Caroline Heldman, you are holding on to Lily. She is holding on to you. You have been an advocate for women, for survivors, for victims of sexual assault for some time. Many believe Many believe there has been a sea change happening. Do you think this today will further propel women to be heard and believed? You know, I do, Michaela. Um, the defense used a really classic tactic that we see in a lot of rape trials. Uh, they victim blamed, slut shamed, uh, ran a character assassination on the five women, the fire, five prior bad act witnesses who took the stand, and also just savaged Andrea Constan's character. And despite all of that and the trials and tribulations that these women went through on the stand, they were victorious. And we don't see this very often. As Lily pointed out, only 2% of rapists ever see a day in jail, ever see the inside of a jail cell. So, um, you know, this, I think, is a turning point for our culture. I think it means that, you know, maybe we believe women more than we used to. Mitchell coming to you live from Cityscape in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. This is essentially the town square of Phoenix, Arizona, and it seems like the entire city is filled with jubilation over the verdict for Jody Arias murder in the first degree guilty. Check it out. State of Arizona versus Jody Ann Arias verdict count one. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn, and the above entitled action upon our oaths do find the defendant as to count one first degree murder guilty. Five jurors find premeditated, zero find felony murder, seven find both premeditated and felony. Let me ask everyone here does everybody feel that this uh, process, the entire process of this trial has restored any possible lost faith in the criminal justice system or reinforced the faith you've already had in the criminal justice system? Yes, I think so. I think definitely. I think um, we needed to have an ending like this after all the trials we've gone through and been so disappointed in. I think it's a good end to show that through the right steps and the right process, it's possible. Our criminal justice system works. It's restored faith, yes, yes or no? Yes, definitely. But we start with breaking news from Los Angeles, where a verdict has been reached in the Hollywood Ripper trial. Female victims, all young, attractive. Each victim stabbed multiple times. One of the victims, 22-year-old Ashley Ellerin, was supposed to go on a date with Hollywood A-lister Ashton Kutcher. She'd been stabbed 47 times. They alleged that Michael Gargiulo went into her home and killed her as she was getting ready to go on her date with Ashton Kutcher. This hobby was plotting the perfect opportunity to attack women with a knife in and around their homes. One man, one killer, Michael Gargiulo. And again, we have a verdict in the so-called Hollywood Ripper trial. Michael Gargiulo accused of brutally murdering three young women and one of his alleged victims, Ashton Kutcher's then-girlfriend, Ashley Ellerin. They were about to go on a date, going to go to a Grammys party. She was stabbed some 47 times as she stepped out of the shower. Now, prosecutors say that Gargiulo was motivated by a sick sexual gratification, calling the murders cold-blooded, torturous, remorseless, and degrading.
A jury set to read that verdict any moment now. We'll have it for you in a matter of moments. Let's bring in our HLN legal analyst, great criminal defense attorney, Joey Jackson. So this trial, two and a half months, about four days of deliberations. Any thoughts on who had the stronger case here? You know, Mike, good afternoon. I have to say that the prosecution would, right? First of all, you have a very unsympathetic defendant. That matters. You have allegations which are vicious. That matters. You have certainly the fact that there are two murder charges that he's facing here, in addition to the attempted murder charge. And when you have the person, Michelle Murphy, who was, uh, thankfully, her life was preserved and that she fought back and she comes in and she gives compelling testimony, that matters. Now, obviously, we know that for another charge as we look there at the you know the timeline in terms of what he did the havoc he reached the 1993 uh, case though he'll be tried on after the fact in Illinois uh, we know that but I just have to say overall based upon the nature of the case I would certainly be surprised in the event that he was not convicted of the two murders in addition to the attempted murder charge Got it. A fugitive fiancé on the run tonight, Brian Laundry, holed up and hiding out, his parents in the spotlight. Will they face charges, too? Late-breaking new information coming in at this hour. I'm Susan Hendricks. A special HLN investigation on Gabby Petito starts now. I was surprised to hear he was back without her. My gut tells me that something bad happened. We drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? I would have been fighting all morning, and, and he would have let me in the car before. This girl's terrorized. She's holding back on saying what was happening. The search is on for Laundry, who has disappeared. He should be leading this charge, and instead he's not. Human remains were discovered, and someone definitely killed her. It's just, as I said, surreal. She was standing on the sidewalk crying, and he walked back in and was like screaming at the hostess. The FBI searching the Florida home laundry shares with his parents for hours. I was surprised to hear, you know, he lawyered up immediately. They're hungry to find Brian Landry. They believe, they believe that he came out here on Tuesday. I believe they love each other. Or at least Gabby loves him. Breaking new details as we come on the air tonight. The urgent manhunt for fugitive fiance Brian Laundrie. The mystery growing at this hour. Where could he be at this moment? Also, new questions about his parents. What do they really know? And could they be in trouble with the law for what they're not saying? And new video in tonight, FBI agents back at the laundry house today taking articles from their home. What specifically the agents were looking for. We are laser focused on the investigation of where Brian is tonight. Survivalist and star of the Discovery series, Dual Survivor, Joseph Teddy leads us off. Plus, our team of forensics, law, criminology, psychology, and law enforcement experts. Their take in just a moment. But first, I want to go to our reporter at the scene in North Point, Florida, Nadia Romero. And Nadia is there. Brian was last seen 12 days ago. Nadia has the details on another visit to the home today, the FBI. Nadia. Well, Susan, just this morning, we saw two FBI agents right in front of the Laundry family home gather up something and put it in a paper bag, much like what we saw when they were executing their second search warrant for evidence.